Things happen because you get out there, because you make connections, because you instigate something. Business of Architecture UK, episode 36. Hello and welcome, Business of Architecture UKers. Ryan Willard here, yet again with another episode to satisfy and satiate all your archipreneurial tendencies and desires. And this week I have a fantastic interview with two of the three founders of White Red Architects. I was speaking with Dickie Lewis and Joe Hare. And these guys are on fire at the moment. They've already got an incredibly exciting portfolio of work, um, which is quite diversified. They're working on residential projects in Belgravia to cultural projects, working with the British Library, to developing a niche where they've executed and delivered a number of co-working spaces already. And in this interview, they talk at length about the approach that they've taken to winning some of their initial work, how they operate as a partnership, and some of the key ingredients to uh, creating a successful business relationship with, particularly with some of your old old friends. Um, and they describe in depth about how they are building a dependable and predictable pipeline of work. So Joe and Dickie are real advocates for business sense and entrepreneurship within the architectural industry and they really do share a lot of their own personal business insights in this interview. So sit back, relax and enjoy with Dickie Lewis and Joe Hare. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and today I am with White Red Architects. I'm here with Dickie Lewis and Joe Hare, who are the co-founders, and there's also a third one, Jesus. Jesus. Yep. Jesus. 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 Jesus, who is, who is, who is outside busily working whilst you guys are taking the time out with me to discuss how you guys have set up your practice. So a real privilege for me to be here. You guys are up to exciting things. You're also very entrepreneurially minded architects. And I think the first question I want to know is how did you guys set up the practice? How long have you been going for and how did it, how did it begin? Well, it started with Dickie um, setting up the company, essentially, or um, registering the company. Uh, we've been talking about it for, a, for a quite a while, but only really as a, well, we may do this at some point. Um, we didn't have, I don't think, any projects at the time. Yeah, one. Maybe one. And uh, you sent me an email saying, I've registered the company, here it is. We have this huge tax liability to pay if we don't file our books in a year's time. <laughs> That was a good, a good sense of motivation. There's nothing quite like the uh, pressure of just getting on with it, is there? <laughs> and so, you, as I said, you started working full-time first, and then, yeah. you, and then Joe transitioned afterwards. And how, did, how did that work? How did you...? Yeah, that's right. We kind of um, we, we knew from the beginning what our strategy was, and we'd already planned out who would go first. Um, by the time we were planning that out, uh, in the beginning, it was just Joe and I who set up White, White Red Architects Limited. And then um, Jesus joined later on, helping us with some competitions and some projects. Uh, and then we, we uh, evolved him as a partner. And um, we became quite a, a good team working together. And we were, one thing we addressed quite early on was who was going to go first, basically, because you know making the jump all three at once was, I think, a bit too much for us to take on. Uh, so we worked through together and were open and honest about who we thought should go first and it turned out that it was me that was the best idea to go first and we, we knew then it was Jesus next and then followed by Joe um, and, it, and it did work out quite nicely. And well, what were the sort of deciding criteria for who should go first? Well, one big one was that Joe had a baby on the way so uh, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was kind of the, the reason for us getting a bit nervous about him going yeah. first and being able to support him with the amount of work. And what was the relationship of you guys beforehand? Did you study together? How did you meet? Yeah, we studied together at Manchester. So um, we were working in the remap unit um, and we found ourselves working together quite frequently, mm. all of the group work. And then um, on a series of competitions that they were running at the time, we did one, um, a pavilion for the Manchester Museum. And uh, we were shortlisted for that. And that was when we really first started really you know, realized it was a good relationship. We worked really well together. Nice. So, and that's it's quite unusual in a way, actually, to hear people talking about the exit strategies from business and for the partners to kind of get together and mm. discuss that. 
Um, what was the driving force? Was that, I mean, that kind of sort of indicates as well that there's a good relationship between you all. Yeah, I think um, we actually realised between the three of us, uh, we've individually got different skills and attributes mm. which we bring to the table. And, and I, I feel certainly quite lucky to have found two complementary personalities to, um, to mine. Um, there's a lot of holes where, you know, I fall short and, and Jesus and Joe are by far better at than I am. Which which are your what are the things that you're good at and that Joe and Jesus are, are good so at? So typically, um, my preference is to, to get out there and meet people and, and connect. Um, but also, I my attention to detail probably isn't as uh, as accurate as Jesus is. Yeah. And also, where where Joe comes in, where we used to work together, I I. Uh, um, in admiration of Joe's design ability. So, you know, Joe's always, I've always been quite competitive, <laughs> quietly competitive Joe. But, uh, you know, Joe was always top, top star, top student. And uh, Joe, you've know, got quite a few accolades, haven't you, Joe? In your design, oh, wow. in your uh, design history, were you a bronze medal yeah, nominee? Yeah, bronze medals, um, but yeah, nominated for the bronze and the silver and the class of 2011, the BD. But we don't talk about that. That's just, <laughs> just a small accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that, so, I've, yes, I've, I've always been design-focused. Yeah. It's been the most important driving force for me. Um, and, you know, say, say back to Dickie, I, I can't believe how, you know, seems to be such a natural businessman and it's such a critical component, obviously, of starting a business. Yes. Um, but is such a... I think when you're in education, um, it's such an, uh, it's not even, it's not necessarily not promoted, but it's not something you're even aware of. Mm. And I think that entrepreneurial spirit, certainly that Dickie embodies, um, is, is critical and vital. And it's been, yeah. We don't often compliment each other like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how, what were the first few projects then? How did you win the work? You guys decided that you were going to set up a practice. Yeah. You, were, you had a good sort of working relationship. You understood each other a bit. It's like a nice, you know, yeah. it's the kind of, you know, good, a good team already in place. Then what? Then how did, how did the first projects come I through the door? that was, I think naivety has been a huge <laughs> uh, bonus for us to have on board. Um, and also, you know, the, that used to be my question to establish architects, is how do you actually get the work? And I really, it used to really frustrate me when they would, kind of say wishy-washy answers like oh it just kind of comes to you or you know I don't really know and it's a and, referral game yeah exactly <laughs> and and the reality is that it started with a friend you know the first project of ours was a friend who needed a bit, bit of help um, and that really kicked us into gear to make sure that we delivered for them mm. and then it is referrals from there but we're now very quickly realizing that isn't really a sustainable business for us um, to to um, expand and at the pace we want to, so this is where our interest in in business and what what do you think are the limiting factors about just relying on referrals from friends? Well, um, reliability and uh, and one thing we that Jesus has uh, been a, a, an advocate for is is monitoring our cash flow and seeing you know, how our invoices and, and analyzing all of that financial data mm. and projections, which is, I, I feel personally, almost impossible with a referral-based business. Yes. Um, and also that that doesn't allow us the predictability that we'd like to be able to forecast in three to six to 12 months. Yes. Um, and we don't feel comfortable building a business based on kind of uh, maybes yeah exactly so so that, that's been an integral part of my role um in in developing the business is trying to develop a system where we can try some sort of predictability in bringing in work and maintaining the, the cash flow we need and how have you done that well um a couple of uses of apps and monitoring financial systems that has been in charge of. But my particular one has been a CRM system um, and trying to educate ourselves with the sales mentality, really um, having a pipeline of work that kind of, you know, you can't get every single job. You've got to understand that you, you'll lose some. 
lost, but you need to account for that loss and also account for dips. And by having us having a pipeline and we have me weekly meetings to monitor the pipeline and see how clients are coming in and how we can fill the potentials with the maybes and, the, and through to the yeses, but even more importantly, monitoring why we got the noes. Um, more, re more recently, uh, uh, one of the best no's I ever had came about and it was a client that was willing to tell me why he didn't pick us mm. and it was absolutely amazing to and we had multiple conversations and I even said to the client this is the best no I've ever got <laughs> <laughs> I think it's way more useful having this no than actually getting the project in a, in a strange way do you mind sharing what kind of things you, you learned yeah, from that? yeah I think it was uh, the dawning of the realisation that we were used to going to projects and chatting with the clients. Um, you know, we, we, we don't have a massive portfolio of, our, of ourselves. So we relied on, on getting on with clients personally and enabling them to trust us based on our personality mm. and a bits of our, our previous experience. And this client, this particular client says, you know, I really like you guys, but I just, you know, I'm in, he was in finance, he's like, I'm used to dealing with risk and I can't take that risk because the other architect that's bidding has done this type of job time in, time out. And I can see it from his website and his portfolio. And he said, you know, you could have used some of your previous experience from other practice and so on. And gave us loads of advice and tips on why he didn't choose us. So we realized that the, the time was happening where we, we couldn't solely rely on just charming clients and we needed to, to strategically think about how we were going to get our work. What had you asked the client why you said no? Because that, that takes a leap in itself. Yeah. Because a lot of people would just be like, we didn't win the project. Yeah. I'm out of here. Well, this is part of the, the in the beginning, it was, you know, the part of the CRM system, the, which is the client relationship management system um, that is, you, you start tracking what happens to those potentials from just early coffees to through to putting the fee proposal in through to either winning or losing them and it starts making you more and more aware of the the numbers that are involved and also the, the what happens with the losses and the more information you can put into those then it helps you for the next time so by asking clients you know what why no more often than not you don't get an answer but every so often, a client is willing to share the, the honest opinion. And we tried our hardest to make clients feel comfortable. <laughs> we don't often get a no, but uh, we try and feel that uh, you know, it's important to make them feel comfortable and being honest with us. Yeah. And, and what other systems have you put in place? How have you, tell me more about how you've been developing the pipeline. Um, so <laughs> the pipeline is you know, an imaginary pipeline from... You, you may be discussing a potential... Well, you may be even speaking to someone new um, who you think may have some possibilities or opportunities in the future, right through to winning a job or losing a job. And one of the first things we had to define was what are those stages through the system in which you can sort of quantify progress. The kind of key points of, exactly. of that, of that yeah, sales process. Ex exactly. So you may meet someone um, and you build up a rapport. You may go for a coffee or, so, or, or, or uh, meet, meet a, a number of times to start to discuss an actual project. So that maybe is the next phase. There might be a third phase where you're discussing details on that project so you know it's something that you're ultimately going to send a proposal for. And then the one penultimately to, to winning or losing is you've sent the proposal and you're waiting for a, a response. Um, and the really interesting thing for us, I think, now is that starting to develop that all three of us are inputting into it, is to see the value of the work in each section mm. and understand what value should be there or what value should be moving through to predict, if we can, what the cash flow, what, what the revenue will be going forward and to look, as you were saying before, Dickie, for dips and anticipate them. Um, yeah. That's, so that's so what, what are the sort of activities then that do you do that can be quantified and measured in terms of like uh, getting more inquiries? What's the first touch point? of you winning a, a job? What's the process that you would go, go through? Do people find you through reading articles or uh, like, say, say it's somebody not within your network. Yeah. How, do you, how do you win a client like that? Uh, well, that, I mean, that is, yeah, that's the ultimate uh, question. And, and I think what we're experiencing at the moment, because we aren't marketing ourselves on Google AdWords or, you know, we, we haven't got the 
the capacity to have such a huge marketing budget, mm. we are mainly relying on being out there and meeting people. Right. And by doing that, we find it's been really useful in in building a network of of other consultants and so on. So it's not all about just meeting clients. It's actually for us meeting even even meeting developers that have got well established architects they're working with. There's there's something we can learn from them and at, at the moment those that initial lead generation is by us getting out there and meeting people and we're in one of the busiest greatest cities in the world there's no better place to be doing it than London um, so we, we might as well make the most of it. What what do you find are the most useful kind of events for you to go to to network in? It changed for our original um, outlook was you know why why would we need to go to an ROBA event to, <laughs> to meet clients but you know actually that was quite a a naive outlook and we we realized how important the architectural community is mm. and i think it's you know programs like business of architecture uh, uh, are useful for us to see what else is out there and we have a little group of young architects in our local area of shoreditch um, where we have a, a whatsapp group where we can ask each other questions we, we hold uh, events, we're going for Christmas lunch together, and it's all young practices that all want to learn from each other, and we feel that we've, by being at these events together, we can help support each other, um, and there's this need, not, there's no need for this competitive, mm. kind of don't, don't, copy my, don't copy my questions exam mentality, but yes. actually it's the opposite. So, so yeah, your answer to your question, our, our events, are mainly focused around architectural uh, networking and events. And, and what's the, the main source of, what, what types of projects are you working on at the moment? What's your kind of, the, uh, the, real, your typical typology of projects? A real mix, but a lot of co-working at the moment. So we're, doing a, we're doing a building in Holborn, which is um, just converting existing offices into co-working space, specifically for people working in the film industry. Um, and we're doing, a couple more of those in one in North London, one in South London. Um, uh, we've also recently completed a blood donation lab. So wow. you, you give you give blood, and then there's a lab behind where they're doing the they're doing the research. Um, <coughs> quite a lot of residential. A new project in um, Storrington, in south of south of London, which is probably our biggest scheme at the moment, 50, 55 units. So it's a real mix, real mix of uh, of things. But we, we we love that because, of course, the more the more diversity in your projects, the more you can learn and pass ideas from one to another. Yeah. Which, uh, which we find, yeah. It's, it's and we're sitting in one of your projects right now. And we're sitting, yes, we are. Uh, this is a converted uh, art gallery uh, for Nala, which is a branding agency that we, that we share with. And um, this was a project that we did over a year and a half ago. And uh, liked it so much that we, in this, in this part of London, that we, we asked if we could stay. <laughs> Brilliant. And so, so what was the arrangement you, that you have here? Because I like you told me a little story earlier on that was. Uh... Yeah. So um, it originated from trying to s approach the director of of Nala, the branding agency, uh, through a personal contact of mine to just inquire about business mentorship. Um, right. uh, Vicky uh, actually is part of a mentorship program, so I was inquiring about what was involved in that and how it helped her. So it just set, started as a meeting in their former offices and then it, it evolved into the fact that they were moving and the potentially they weren't aware of what was needed and in, involved in the tender process in, in finding a contractor and telling them what they, they required. So we offered to our services um, and, that, and that started a chain of events which led to, instead of taking a, a fee, we actually... Um, exchange services and whilst they had a few desks remaining that were you know enabling them to expand in the future they didn't need them right now for the, for the first couple of years so um, we exchanged our fee for for those desk spaces okay. and it's been a really brilliant relationship between our businesses their business is probably uh, five years ahead of ours and yeah. um, not the same industry but Similar fund fundamentals, yeah, and actually we've learned a lot about running a project efficiently, and they seem to do it a lot better than well, architects. Th well, this is this is one of the really fascinating things when you do 
kind of things like like you know swap services for uh, an asset like you know having your rent paid for a bit, for a certain amount of time and also you've got just being able to sit with another experienced business that's kind of almost priceless and you don't realize how valuable yeah how you, valuable that is you can't put a price on the, if if that other person is honest and open you know actually going through finances together is is so invaluable because it's it's things like expectations of dips in work and difficulty in finding work and you know you, you don't expect these things when you're starting a, a business mm. you think it's just going to be an upward trajectory forever um but it's really great having that um person that's willing to discuss things and hopefully we we help them from another perspective and and kind of test some of their ideas as well but uh, at the moment, we're definitely getting more out of there. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised like yeah. how how it often works the other way around when other sort of mature businesses enjoy being around the enthusiasm and passion. And also, like you say, the naivety is often such a... Because you just try stuff. One um, amazing thing recently is that, um, obviously, Joe was formerly at... A-H-M-M. Yeah. And um, a, a massive practice, absolutely nailing it at the moment. And uh, so it was quite um, astounding to see how well they took that Joe was leaving to set up his own practice and how supportive they've been. And something we were struggling with was our place in setting up a business whilst remaining as architects because we, we love design. It's our, our passion that we've built our business around. And we struggled with this conundrum of whether or not we had to be remain as cool, young tr architects just focusing on design and forget about business. But at the same time, we really wanted it to, to be successful. Mm. And uh, Simon Alford, uh, director of AHMM, actually met with myself and Joe. Uh, I'd never met him before. I was not at AHMM. So it, it was so nice for him to say, OK, well, as part of an exit interview, let's have a chat about how you know how things will go in the future and just a, a a bit of wisdom and one thing that he said to us that's amazing yeah it's i mean <laughs> he's a busy man so yeah, that's uh, great. he scheduled in half an hour to have a chat with us and you know we, it's a tagline that we keep telling to people that's left personally me is feeling a lot more comfortable is that he said that ahmm are in business to make great architecture and i really love that because mm. it made a lot of sense for me and made me feel really com comfortable with the idea that you know, they're producing amazing architecture and they're able to do that because their business is going so well. Yes. And there's no shame in that. So I think the perception of architects struggling and trying to maybe not taking on too much work and not being too commercial is, you know, is is a common one but i think there is also the alternative that you know doing well in business isn't anything to be ashamed of yeah well um, it, it's, it's almost kind of um absurd that we're having this conversation that that we come from an architectural context or an education where there is inherently a culture that makes us averse to business mm -hmm. in many ways why do you why do you think that is and how do, how have you've started to sort of elaborate about how you've kind of uh solved that or kind of resolved yeah. it in your own? Uh, I would love to resolve that. <laughs> we, haven't solved any, we haven't solved anything. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, ultimately, part of what we do is, is make art, isn't it, as architects, um, and be creative and, for better or for worse, try something new on every project. Um, and that is often a labour of love and often, often puts any logical business decision to the back of the line. Um, I think what we're, tr what we're saying is we're trying to organize our, you know, trying to organize ourselves so that we make the right decision to keep the business, to, to, make, to make a business that, that works mm. um, and allows us to do that, sort of that creative element. But um, it's obviously a very difficult balance trying to make sure you've got your priorities right and you've got systems or um, you allow yourself the freedom to be able to do that work when you have the opportunity. Um, for a, for a, project, a project we're working on at the moment for the British Library, for example, we're spending 
far more time than we're being paid for to make it something special, something we, we, you know, we want to invest in. There's an opportunity to do something different, and that needs to be supported by other projects. So it's, it's that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's, and a, as, it's a continuous uh, challenge. Yeah, and as you say, if you've got a kind of a keen eye on the finances and you're measuring as much as you can, then you're able to see and That's make... It informed decisions about when you're going to be, you know, actually we're going to really go for the architecture here because we Absol can. Absolutely, but particularly as you're growing, because we're, we've, grown, we've grown quite a lot in the last uh, few months, and it's a case of getting used to that new liability, essentially, that new, that new, business, that you've, that the new business that you've become to understand what is required to run that business and, um, and, and recalibrating. So, so what, what would you say has been the biggest challenge or obstacle that you've successfully overcome? Really difficult question. <laughs> There's been a lot of them. I was, I was going to say, I've got, I've got one. You told me yeah, you, yeah. you have a different one. I think, the, I think one of the biggest ones that happened early on, very early on actually, was, as Dickie mentioned before, defining our roles. Because it was such a crucial moment in the growth of the business or in the, in the, in the in the development of the business mm. because it allowed us basically to free up <clears throat> big chunks of your mind that were preoccupied with how about this and how about this and finances etc and allowed you to focus on one specific thing that you felt like you were better at and you felt endorsed by the other two that you were also better at um that was one of the most liberating uh, meetings i think i've ever had and how was that? How was that instigated? Was that something that you, you kind of felt you were treading on each other's toes? Or? I don't. I don't know. I think it was something that we 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 did a lot of audio books, a lot of podcasts uh, in the background to build up, you know, build up your knowledge of business. And the, I think we were all it all dawned on us that we needed to have that conversation to see what came out of it. And we went to the pub. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's. There's certain traits that all of our personalities have. I, you know, my attention span doesn't allow me to have the, the attention to detail that Jesus has towards the finances and the projections and, and, the, and the running of the practice. Yes. You know, there's so much that's involved in that that, that Jesus thrives on and enjoys and, and, are, and is very good at and mm. uh, I wouldn't be interested in, in, in be able to do. So, and it's the same with Joe and it's the same with myself. Each of us have different qualities and we naturally started trying to do those things within the business and until it got to the point where it was obvious that we needed to sit down and have a chat about this. And, you know, we're lucky enough to have a great meeting room and office space where, and we meet regularly, we meet every week. Um, and we also held an AGM uh, where we went away for, to Amsterdam for a couple of nice, days. Nice, nice. Just to enjoy the fact that we're, doing a little bit better at the moment and take a bit of time for ourselves as directors um, and constructively set up a, uh, it's a nice uh, four hour train ride from the Eurostar to Amsterdam. So we, we presented to each other and discussed the ins and outs of, of where we want to be and what we think is involved. And we, we were all on the same page as where, where our um, strengths lie. So we, we kind of set it in stone a little bit. And, and since doing those meetings it, it helps us in our own uh, trajectory and that hopefully inevitably helps the business so what's next what's next uh well we we're we, coming into the beginning of 2019 yeah what have so you got plans for, what have you got plans for next year and how are you going about facilitating your growth so we uh we would like to consolidate take a moment to to make sure that we're capable of running at the size we are yeah um and test our strategies for is it just the three of you at the moment or just there's five five of so you. We, we have two employees two architects right. um who are brilliant and producing work better than we are yeah because we're not you know we're running around like headless chickens <laughs> and uh and there are kind of rocks we lean on to help us uh, actually produce produce the work, and so we we want to make sure that you know. And when did when did they come on board? Two months ago. Two months ago. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's yeah. quite recent. And yeah, what, yeah. So what's been that must have been quite a yeah like a, a real shift. It, yeah, it was a bold move that we had to. Well, it's, it's for us. It was yeah. It well, no, was, it is. It's, I yeah. mean, taking on taking on staff and mo making yeah. a movement from yeah, it, it really it's is the sense of responsibility that you don't appreciate until you employ uh, someone else. Yes. As, when, you're, when you're employing yourself, you kind of 
thinks to yourself, well, you know, I'll be okay. And if we have to decrease pay and so on, we yeah, can do exactly. It, but you can respond yeah. a little bit. Like, I'll find this month. I'll exactly you know, I'll leave it in the business. You know, don't ideally, worry. we don't do that. But um, as soon as you, you can pay yourself it, late, <laughs> <laughs> we try not to. Yeah, but if uh, you have to. <laughs> Silly architect, <laughs> but yeah. So we we as soon as you cross that threshold, um, there's a huge amount of responsibility you owe to that person that you've you've offered this opportunity. So um, I think that was quite good for us really to take on that challenge. And one, I think we'd really like to make sure we we are capable of uh, increasing our staff numbers and also dealing with that increase when it comes. Um, so there's a moment of consolidation we need to begin with at the beginning of 2019. Mm. But I think by the end of the year, we want to have expanded and to um, see more predictability in, in dealing with the larger projects. Right. And can I ask a few questions about how you, about the, the process of hiring? Yeah. Um, so how did you decide who you needed? What was, how did you decide to hire? You hired so two architects. Yes, two architects. As opposed to part ones or part twos. Right, exactly. And why did you decide to do that and not go for part ones, part twos? Or because uh, a lot of the work we've had, um, we were we were fairly heavily snowed under at one point where we need, needed we needed to um, we needed help, and we needed specifically help, technical help and help with planning and help with things where you needed to have experience, and we needed also people to be able to run that work and own it. Um, multiple projects at one time, even if they weren't that big. Um, and so we specifically went for people with more experience. Yeah, got yeah. it. And we, we went about it by we advertising on our website. I'm not sure how much traffic that gets. Um, but we also we also uh, put an ad on Dizine Jobs, was it in the end? Yeah. And, um, and that, was, that was great. That garners lots of um, responses. Brilliant. We actually um, toyed with the idea of uh, recruiters. Right. But, um, a uh, personal contact of mine uh, who is an architectural recruiter, I, um, I kind of bent his ear for a bit and asked him a few questions. And and and, and he said, you know, what, what are you looking for? And which of the directors does that uh, match nearly? And so, you know, he said, you know, Joe and you are will get charmed by someone that, you know, is, it will be like you guys. And actually, the type of, person or personality that we needed was someone like Jesus who's very good technically and will, will be very can you know um, have the ability to deal with issues and have the attention to detail um, I'm making myself sound really scatty now, no 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 uh, the, 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 but yeah the, the, this I is really interesting because actually it's it's very um, you know when you're making a decision about hiring somebody mm. you can go with like Oh, I like them because they're like me, and it yeah. can, and but th and that's an emotional thing yeah. that can actually undermine what you actually need if you, if you exactly. haven't if you haven't gone for a, yeah. if you hadn't had a conversation with somebody else to make it explicit exactly. And so so actually out of that conversation, it was really useful because Joe and I stepped back from the the recruiting process. Jesus took control of of that, and of course we we had second round interviews where Joe and I were involved, mm. but it was it's been absolutely amazing how it's worked out because we couldn't have asked for better um, employees and architects that are on our team now and they're, you know, performing how we envisaged it with and, and excelling that. So um, it, it was absolutely an amazing piece of advice for us because I think, if we're honest, Joe and I probably would have chosen someone, you know, th or that wouldn't potentially have been the right for the role. Mm. Um, so I think it was... I think it was a really great piece of advice. Um, and then, you know, the recruiter said that when you're bigger and you, you don't have the time to do it, <laughs> then you can use me later. So, you know, have everyone's helping each other out with, the, you know, a long, long game in but mind. It, but it is, and it's a really important aspect of any business is hiring, retaining talent, finding the right people. And also, you know, as young practices, smaller practices, like that's something that you just, we might not have any experience in whatsoever. And just a little conversation like that, already for me, me my head's going, oh, of course, that's just so, yeah, that makes such a big difference to actually. And that was back to my point earlier about uh, events we're going to, mm. you know, that's a great example of these events we're going to a meeting. Potentially, you might think, why would I need to meet an architectural recruiter? And actually, it's amazing how just building a network, being open to advice and, and con consultants and people that can help you is 
is beneficial to your practice and not you don't need to be a client seeker all the time yeah and and someone uh i can't remember where this quote came from but um it's the networking isn't hunting it's actually farming and I really like that. I know it's uh, quite cheesy, but Sounds uh, like something from B and I. Yeah, I it's probably <laughs> it's probably it's probably one of my cheesy American podcasts. So, I, I, but, I yeah, to, I used to say that when I was at B and I. Yeah, but it's farming. It, I quite like the, but, yeah, that. that so, um, you know, the, the idea that you're not going to a networking event and just throwing your cards everywhere and try and being like, where are the clients come from, and actually, you know, we are learning to enjoy this process of building a business, which is. I think clients see that and they see our energy. You know, the recent um, job that we we um, were appointed for for the British Library, we were up against some some of the bigger architects, the bigger names for that, um, and the client chose us uh, based on one of the meetings that Joe and Jesus went to, and they could see the energy and the excitement in this young practice, and they took a risk on. The fact that our portfolio wasn't the V&A members' room and all of the bigger commissions that the, the other architects had, but the fact that we valued their project and were going to put as much as we could into mm. it. And, you know, it's a combination of clients like that that are willing to take a risk, but also the fact that we are now in a place where we're enjoying this process and full of energy. So Brilliant. So final question. If you had Joe, Dickey, and Jesus sitting across the table from a couple of years ago, what would you say? Another fantastic question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Or, or advice, uh, advice for like people who are just starting out their practices. I think um, it sounds obvious, but don't be afraid to get out there. Um, things happen because you get out there because you make connections, because you instigate something. Mm. And as Dickie was saying, um, this, uh, this is not farming, it's about starting relationships and cultivating relationships. Um, it's, a people, it's a people's business, and the more connections you can make and the more friends you can make and the more discussions you can have, the more interesting things happen. And, yeah, that's been... I think, um, yeah, that's similar to my, to my answer as well, in that... I'd probably say to myself, there's no quick fix. Um, there's no, there's no, I'd probably say to myself that there's no quick fix. And, you know, there's been times where we tried to get thousands of followers on Pinterest and, mm. and tried to maybe increase our SEO or things that you can look on YouTube and other uh, Silicon Valley style companies and try and get these hacks um, but in reality it's just about um, keeping the long game mm. and um, and actually generating relationships with people uh, and it, you know in, and as I said earlier enjoying that process cause it, brilliant yeah. thank you very much guys I do hope that I get to keep viewing you on the long game and that we get to speak very shortly again to hear how your company's been growing so thank you so much for your time Thank you. Thank you very much. So that is a wrap. Thank you for listening. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.